So basically, we, I'm creating the methods programs package, method programs package I'm creating. So you also create already, I think you have method programs package. Right, you already have method programs. Click and finish. If you have already, not necessary in your project. If you don't have only, you have to create. Okay, closing all of them. Okay. There is the one uh, we need to create a static members demo. Static members means static variables, static methods. And I'm going to create a static variable demo, static members demo. Static. So members demo. That's my class name. I'll take the main method because I want to execute my program in this class. That's why I need a main method. So if you want to generate the comments, you generate the comments also. Okay. So that's the one thing. And uh, click on finish. The class naming conventions you have to follow while creating. Make sure you create, you know, follow the class naming conventions. So first I'll declare the variables, all the static variables. The four access modifiers, four static variables I'm going to create. So, <coughs> Sarita, can you tell me what is static variable syntax? Static variable, sir. Static variable syntax. Access, the access modifier. Okay, access modifier. Static keyword, data static, type. Data type. Value, uh, data type uh, variable, variable name. Variable name. Equal, equal to value. value. Right. Semicolon. With the semicolon yeah. also, if you tell it's going to be easy for me. First, I'm going to use private variable. Private static. See, access modifier I have given. What I have given? Private. private. So any one, there are four, right? Any one you can give. So if you give private, what is meaning of that? You are reducing the permission. Yes. The visibility you are reducing. So that's the meaning of that. Static means it is a static variable. It represents the static variable. So I want to create a char C equal to capital A. So this is my first variable I declared. Now I'll declare a second variable with a default access modifier. So what is the default access modifier? We have default means no keyword you should write. So in yes. this place, it should write a blank. Yes. Leave it blank, then write static keyword. The next keyword is static color, right? That's where yes. I write the static keyword. So then I'll declare int is there. So int i equal to 25. So this is another static variable. I declared and assigned a value also. Declared and assigned a value also. So declaration and assignment both are done. Next, protected static C. Access modifier, what I have written? Protected. Next, static. Next, what is that? Data type, right? Data type. So what is the data type you want to use? So the data type, I'm, I'm going to use float. F equal to 3.5 cap left. So then I'm going to declare a public next type variable. The all access modifiers I have used, I'm covering all access modifiers here with variables. 
So that means you are covering access modifiers. You are covering static keyword with variables. So long l equal to 50 l. So this is the how you can declare your variables. Four types of variables we have declared. Now we need to write the methods. So what are the methods? You have to write four methods. So two with the wide, two without wide. So Pavni, can you tell me a wide method without parameter syntax? Wide method? With wide, without parameters. Access modifier? Yeah. Static data type? My data type, madam. Which one you are writing? Static method you are writing? Static Again. method? Uh, static method names. Wrong. Two days, so that, that's why I given for us two days and you're not replacing. My health is not well, sir. Okay, take care then. So, it wide means? Yeah, wide means wide, then method name. Okay. Parenthesis, curly bracket, logic. So this is the static method syntax. With wide, without parameters. So I'm going to use all this data. All this data I'm going to use. So in this method, whatever I'm going to create. So private, static, wide. I'm going to do division. Division of the so these variables, I'm going to do that. As per this method, you are going or not? Access modifier, I have given private. So private means where is the visibility for this method? Where you can use this method? Um, hmm? Only in the main. In the class. Hmm? Non static. Non static. No, it has to be in static method. My question is where is the visibility for this method? If private access modifier is there, where you can use this method? The classes. The class itself. Excellent. In the class so, only, in the same class only. Somebody telling main method, somebody telling another static method. I can use in this class anywhere, but not outside the class. So this method is not visible outside the class. Why? Because of private keyboard. So this C also not visible in outside the class. Why? Because of private keyboard. So that means C I can use in this method only or in this class, in this class only. So not method, you should not say method. In this class only. Private means in this class only you can use, not outside the class. So the, I'm repeating, so see, if you don't read all these things, it doesn't work out for you guys. I'm telling you repeatedly. You have to remember these points. Several times I asked that, but still you're making mistakes on this. So rectify that, okay? I'm just getting started. Uh, so division method. Just one print statement I'm so that I can understand where my division method is starting. So now I want to find out, I'll use all this data, this data, this data, this data, this data. So one more point, if you don't know, note down this point. If you are using a character, 
variable in between the calculations. If you are using a character in the mathematical operations, the ASCII code of that character will participate there. Again, I'm repeating. If you are using the character variable in the mathematical operations, like plus between the two numbers plus you are doing, maybe you are doing plus of I and C, the A won't participate. A inside there is a number that is called ASCII code. That ASCII code will come and participate there. So if you don't know, note down these points so that you can remember, right? So I want to fetch. What is the last word? Is it like uh, the ASCII key word after that? What is it? If you are using a character in the mathematical operations, the character ASCII code will participate in the mathematical operations. Okay. Not the character A. Character integral number. So every character has one integer internally. That number will participate in the mathematical operation. If you're doing a plus operation, so not the A will participate. A has one integer number that is called ASCII code. So capital A has ASCII code. I have shown you last class ASCII table, 65. Small a ASCII code 97. These are fixed. It doesn't change. Okay. So now I want to get the Reminder of these two variables, C and I. So, otherwise I'll do C plus L and divided by I. So I want to fetch the remainder of that. So how can you fetch the remainder? So, so what is the remainder means what? How can you fetch the remainder? Which operator you need to use to fetch the remainder? User EAR. Hmm? So, how can you fetch the remainder of between numbers? So, what is the one you have to use? So, percentile symbol. So, fetch the remainder using percentile. So, remember this point will help you in the even interview programs also. So this simple line will help you. So if you catch this point, you can follow the interview programs like uh, uh, Armstrong numbers, polyndrome numbers, reversing a number, and uh, neon number. All these programs you can achieve with this logic. Particular number, remainder, how can you get? You have to use this percentile number. If you know this concept, you can solve those problems. The simple basics I'm giving, but I'm, I'm going to use them in the bigger, bigger programs. That's why I'll start with very, very small, small programs. First, I'll sum C plus L and percentile by I. So I will get an output Reminder long code. So reminder value equal to variable name. So C plus L. So these two I'm summing up. Then so what I'm doing? Percentile by I. C. I didn't declare C L I here in this method inside, but I'm using I outside I declared as a static variables. I'm consuming here. I'm using, I'm using the variable names to do operations. 
Sarita, please catch that. I declared the data here and I'm using that data inside the methods for my operations. Mm. So this output is going to give you long data. So that's why I'm storing in the long variable. So then I can print the data, the output. C plus L. percentile by I expression output is. So this is the all string representation. Anything you place in double quotation mark, it doesn't matter what you place. Everything will be treated as a string. Then I'm appending with a plus operator. This value I want to print. So let's print this. That's it. So even you can declare a local variable also, one local variable. See, I can declare byte, so bt equal to five, I can declare. So even if you want to add, you can add this five also here. So what is that bt variable? See, the local variables. So what is the local variable syntax? Method inside you have to declare data type, so variable name, name equal, to equal to value. Is it following or not this one? Data type is a byte. So variable name is BT. So assignment operator value. This value will go and store in this BT variable. That BT I'm calling here. First a declaration and assign the value. Then use that variable here in your calculations. So next. So double, I'm going to fetch the quotient value. What is, how can you fetch the quotient value? Using this operator. These are all mathematical operators, okay? So double quotient value equal to, so I'm going to use all this data. So every data I'm going to use. Uh, C multiply by L minus F multiply by BT. So this is all I'm doing. And then, so I'm going to do a I. See, it's up to you how you want to do that calculation. See, I multiplied C and L values. Then, I multiplied F and BT values, I'm subtracting. subtracting. Then I'm doing a division of I with I data, that is 25. So C into 50 multiplied by 65, you'll get a bigger data minus, and uh, you are multiplying 3.5 with uh, five, result is 15. So you get a, some floating data, so integer minus float, you'll get a float value. Float divided by integer, you'll get a double data, double or float value. So, so that's the basics of this normal mathematics. This is not Java, okay? Just normal mathematics, these are all. And uh, so I can give this expression there. QT value. I'm printing. So that's it. Um, I don't want to do any other extra thing here. S Y S O. That's a simple one method. Is this the end of division method? So my objective is I want to create a static method with void without parameters. Static method with void without parameters. 
So that combination I created. Saur, any questions here before uh, moving on? Our next method. So see, I'm using a multi-line commenting this one. This is the multi-line commenting. So if you want a so document comment, see, I can, I can use a document comment. See, it will become a document comment. I can write. So this method, I'll write a, this method uh, explains. This method is used to perform so division operator operation between numbers. So that's it. So anybody can come understand what this method is doing. So every method starts with a curly bracket. So ends with a curly bracket. This, is the, this method is over. I'm going for my next method. So before that, so what I want to do is, what is the second type of method? Second type of static method. With parameters. With the parameters. Wide method with the parameters. Access modifier, static, wide, wide method name, data type. So data type parameter one now. So data type parameter two. I'm using two parameters here. I'm using two parameters here. So that's why I'm taking this one. But what I'm doing here is I want to swap given two numbers, given integer numbers without third variable. So what is the program we need to do? So write a program to swap. So what is swapping? Exchanging, right? So swap given two integer numbers write a program to swap given two integer numbers so that's a program i need to write so this i will use access modifier public that means public the next what is the next keyword public access modifier is done static so next what is the keyword static, static. static. so next what is the keyword static after uh, void. 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 So the method name I need to give is swap without third variable. The method name you have to write here. See all first word, all lowercase. Swap without W capital. Third T capital. Variable V capital. That's a method name how to write. So one word is there. All letters are lowercase. This is the one word, right? All letters are lowercase. But if more than one word is there, first word are lowercase. Second word onwards, each word, first letter, capital letter. So these are the naming conventions you must follow. But this, so I have written till here only, but this is missing, right? I have to write first data type. So two, two integers I'm saying. So we have to take integer, int, a comma, int, B. See, these are the two parameters. A is a one parameter, B is one parameter. Am I following as it is this formula or not? Yes. Yes. That's, that's the what I'm saying. Everything is formulas. If you remember the formulas, you want to create a static method with the parameters. This is the syntax you have to follow. Anywhere you go, this is the standard formula. It's never going to change. Then why you uh, no struggle? I don't understand. If you remember this, it's easy. That more practice is necessary there to get that confidence. So I'm going to print first A and B values before swapping. Let's print before swapping A, B values. So before swapping A value plus A plus B value plus B. I'm appending. See, this is all one string, right? String from here to 
here one string right will you agree this is the one string will you agree or not i need to print the a value so that i need to write this parameter name as it is i should not put in double quotes that's why appending string plus integer number then this i need to append with this string then this string i am appending with b value <clears throat> so whatever the a value you are giving whatever the b value you are giving that will come and print here so here so then i need to write a logic now let's build the logic so very simple all mathematical addition or subtraction and that's it just addition or subtraction and assignment operator so just first step is step 1 what is the step 1 sum a and b and assign to a c a equal to a plus b that's the first step step 2 So now you subtract this a with this a value from this a. You subtract the b value and then assign to b. Subtract the b value from a and assign to b. So b equal to a minus b. That's it. Step three. Again, subtract a value with this b and assign to a. So same thing. I am just putting subtract three steps only. Very simple. Step. Subtract the b value from a and assign to a. So a equal to a minus b over. So these are the three steps. If you perform, the a value will go to b, b value should come to a. So that will happen. So this logic is I'm going to use in the bigger programs. So I have given here, but I'm going to use in the bigger array programs. Even string programs concept also similar. So after swapping. Let's say I'll go very basic programs. That's where you will practice is important, right? Remembering this logic, all this is important. Is this any complicated, Andy? Just summing the two numbers, you already know, right? We all know did this in very beginning basics of our education. But here, the output of this I'm storing to A. That how you can assign this right side output using assignment operator. So that assignment operator you are using. That's it. Okay. So that's the second method. So both wide methods are done. What are the next methods left now? Two without void hmm? with parameters. Excellent. Super. So without void with parameters. So let me bring these parameters also here in the method. So how to bring these parameter names also in the document comment? So how can you do that? First, write the method. You have to write the method. Finish the method with parameters, and then above the method, just type document comment. See the parameter at the rate parameter a at the rate parameter. That means this method is having two parameters. That's the meaning of that. So I can put a. So this is a document comment. This all thing is called document comment. That means you are explaining about this method. Just about the method. That's it. Now, as I mentioned, next method is. Otherwise, I'll write later. So, access modifier. So what is the so without void static static hmm 
without void means you should not write void, right? What do you need to write extra in place of void? Data type. Data type. Data type. Yeah. Excellent. And then method, method name. name. Parenthesis, curly Logic. brackets, logic, logic, and return, return keyword. So return keyword must be there in the body. That's the difference between these methods. Void methods doesn't have a written keyword in the body, but without void methods, they must have a written keyword in the method body. Okay, so let's do that. Access modifier I'm taking duplicate, uh, sorry, default. Default I'll take. Default means what I need to place here. Nothing. 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 Just leave blank. Then what is the next keyword? Static. Static. So write the static here. So next, what is the? But you should understand what program we are writing. We are writing a program. It should return the decimal value, random decimal value. So what is the program we are writing? It should return the Random decimal value. So how can you return a random decimal value? So that's what the program we are going to write. So static. So random decimal value. Decimal values, what are the decimal data types? Float. Float or double. But this one returns a double data. Double, you can put a float also, but you have to do type cast. That's why I'm putting a double bigger memory space. So static double. See, I have written the access modifier default here. The next static keyword. Next data type, what is the data type I have written? Double. Now, what is the method name? So get random double value or double number, whatever it is. So no parameters, right? So just leave it. So, but here is one concept is there. I need to tell math, math class. I need to explain about math class. So generating, so random double value from zero to one. In between zero to one only it will generate. So how can you generate this? So math class is there. So using math class, random method, so we can generate, we can generate, so random double number. Using math class, random method. So random method is a return type method, which returns the data. So what data it returns to you? Double data it returns. The return type of this method is, this is the static return type method. Using math class, static, so return type method, random method. Return type, random method you can use. So that means the method which returns a value means you have to store in the variable, right? It is returning some, um, some output. This method is returning. One class, a static method, how can you call in another class? This is a different class, right? This is our class name. But math class is a different class that is already developed by Java. That class, static methods, you want to call here. So this is the formula you have to use. So what data type it is returning, that data type. So data type of that method, variable to store the output. So variable name equal to class name dot static return type method. So I'm going to show you these formulas, all these formulas, but this is the formula. Any return type methods, one class return type method, how can you call in another class? Now, which class method you are calling? Math class method, that is a random method, which is a return type method, which returns a double data. So write that. That 
double. So this method is returning a double data. So that's why data type place, I put a double data. So variable name, I can give rand value equal to. So what is the class name? Which class this random method is there? Uh, math. math. Class. Math class. Write the math class dot. So you just put a random R. So automatically it's showing method name is a static method. What is the return type of this? Double. So this double I'm writing in the left side. Please catch if you don't understand, please ask me now itself. Why I am writing a right a left side a double. This method is giving output to you. What type of data it is giving? Double data it is giving. That's why I'm storing first data type. So this is the formula. How can you call other class return type non-static method? So this is the formula I given. So data type. This method is going to give this type of data and variable name to store the data and class name. So this method is available in the math class. That's why I written math class and the method name is random method. See, you can see there a class name is there. What type of data it is returning is there. What is the method name is there? This is the method name he is returning a random data and I'm storing here. So then, so you got already random data here. So every time you run this program, you'll get a new data. So return this random value. That's it. That's the return type method. See, I'm just flowing everything. See, so you got a return value. You got a return value return at the rate return. This method is returning. So this method returns. So random double data from zero to one. So let me give you this also there. This syntax also I'll put in the why kept now is after writing the method, you will get the at the rate return also. That's why so I kept it. So put on the document comment. So this method is explaining about this method. About this method, it is explained. Okay. Last method. So let's finish the last method. What is the last method? <laughs> Hmm? Without void, with without, uh, without void, without void, with parameters. Excellent. Access modifier. Access modifier. Static. Static. Data type. Data type. Method, method name. name. So Parenthesis. data type. So I'll take one parameter for this, and logic you build, and return the value. So this method has to return the value. Okay. So now this is the program I want to do here. What program I'm going to write here is this method has to return the Fahrenheit degree temperature when I give a Celsius degree temperature. So I'll give, I'll input the Celsius degree temperature to this method. And the method, what is the output here? It has to give it to you. For any degrees temperature. And the exercise for you is you provide the Fahrenheit degrees temperature to the method as an input, and it should give the Celsius degrees temperature to you. So that is the method you have to write. So, what is the way access modifier left now? We what are the access modifier we used for the methods? Private we used, public we used, default we used. So what is the left now? Protected. 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 So I'm writing protected. So basically, I want to use all access modifiers for my methods. So that I'll come to know which method, where I can use, where I cannot use. Right? Even I'm covering the access modifiers also in this. This is the crucial classes. Next three, four days. These are the crucial classes. Focus more each and every formula by heart. No option for you also. By heart. 
if you write multiple times these formulas these formulas you can remember same formulas all the places you will get even in the web driver everywhere this is the formula series you want to use other class methods in this class how can you call see this is the form if you remember the formula life is going to be very easy in the coding just replacing one by one replacing one by one replacing one by one replacing that's it with the semicolon also i'm giving you won't get even compiled errors also if you follow the formulas if you don't follow the formulas you will see errors okay so protected let's move on quickly finish static so what is the formula where what is the thing you are doing i'm doing a float data i want so for any degree temperature i want i'll give you celsius degree temperature i want to convert that as celsius degree temperature into fahrenheit how can you convert so what is the task i have given to you what is the task i have given to you provide fahrenheit celsius celsius so you input the fahrenheit temperature and convert into celsius okay convert celsius into for any heat temperature so this is the method and float ct i am giving a celsius degree temperature to this method so i am getting the output as a fahrenheit temperature so this is the method you can give So just write converting Celsius temperature C T to Fahrenheit temperature. That's it. Very simple. One statement I have written. But what is the formula, sir? How do I know this formula? So where can I get this formula? Just Google it. As a so Google is there. So just if you don't know, I'm telling. You, just go to Google. And just say Celsius to Fahrenheit. Simple, you will get a formula. Okay, you don't need to even struggle. Also, take the formula and use it everywhere, wherever you want. See, they will give very nice formulas, and you can use the conversions. See, these are all anything you can use anywhere you go. Same, they will give formulas. So I want to get a Fahrenheit temperature, right? So I'll write a uh, left side Fahrenheit temperature. First to float. So Fahrenheit temperature equal to. So you can see the formula here. I think this guy didn't give formula, so let's go to other. My system is slow. Okay. Even this also, I think it has. Here it is. Very simple. Can you see here? Celsius degree temperature multiplied by one point eight plus thirty two. So this is the one. How simple it is. You see that. So just do the same thing. I just put a CT, right? CT. Multiply multiplication is um, this one plus thirty two. So, but why you are getting still error is so because right side it is giving a double data. 
type mismatch. You see that type mismatch error, this one. Type mismatch error. Even I'm covering a type testing also one more time here. Type mismatch. So read the statement. Why you are getting error here? Why you are getting error? Read. Then only you can understand and you can solve the problems. So read that. Cannot convert from double to float. Which is a double, which is a float to now? One by T. Uh, this entire thing is throwing error. Yes. So which is a float here, which in this line, which is a float here, which is a double here? Right, so 128 is float after is equal to float and this side is a double. Which, which side is a double? Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side is double. Right side. 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 Which is the double? RHS or LHS one? Right side. Right side. Right side. So right. this is the double data. So you are you are assigning to float data. It won't fit, right? This is the 64 bit too. This is the 32 bit. 64 bit cannot fit in the 32 bit memory. So that's why you are getting a type mismatch. Both are same data data type, but the memory says are not fit. That's why you are getting a type mismatch. So then how can you solve this? Typecasting. Type 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 so, right side variable before, put a parenthesis in the left side variable data type. So, that's the data type of left side. So, I kept it. So, now this also converted into float. So, this is a float now, and this is a value, variable value also float. Both are float. Now, so return FT. So, this is the how to. Prepare the four type of methods, four things. Just I'll uh, stop this, okay? And I'll record another one. Yes, bigger ones are good.